Hello everyone, let us discuss the future value of annuity due. First, define muna natin kung ano ang annuity. It is a series, ibig sabihin sunod-sunod na equal payments at regular and consistent intervals. Kunwari, magbabayad ako ng specific amount, say 5,000 every month, or pwede rin namang quarterly, semi-annually, or annually na isang beses sa isang taon. Then there are kinds of annuity, para sa video na to ang pag-uusapan natin ay annuity due. It is an annuity that is paid or received at the beginning of the time period. Ito yung crucial na term when it comes to annuity due. Kasi kung titignan natin yung cash flow diagram dito sa baba, at period zero pa lang, sa umpisa pa lang ay nagbabayad na tayo ng annuity. Tapos bago mag-umpisa yung susunod na period, nagbabayad na tayo, then tuloy-tuloy lang yung pagbabayad ng annuity hanggang makarating tayo dun sa period bago yung huli, eto na yung huling bayad natin. Or pwede rin na huling kuha ng pera, and then dahil nagbayad na tayo sa umpisa nitong period na to, then wala ng annuity dito sa dulo. Ito yung unique na karakteristik when it comes to annuity due. Then ang i-compute natin ay yung future value, this FV, ito yung pera na matatanggap or babayaran kapag natapos na yung series of equal payment yung annuities natin for a count of N periods. Halimbawa, nagde-deposito ka ng pera, then ito na yung total amount kasama yung tubo na makukuha mo kapag nag-decide ka na na kuhanin yung pera. Now let us talk about the formula kung paano kuhanin ang future value ng annuity due. We represent it by this symbol. We have our future value of annuity due. This is just equal to etong A, eto yung annuity natin, eto yung periodic payment. Then nakamultiply siya sa 1 plus I, wherein yung I na to can be computed by this formula. Yung R natin na rate of interest should be in decimals will be divided by M. This M is the number of payment periods in a year. Kung annual lang payment, then ang M natin is 1. Kung semi-annual naman, our M is 2. Kung quarter, M is 4. And if monthly, ang M natin is equal to 12. Then it is raised to our exponent N. Makukuha naman natin to by multiplying our M. This is still the same number of periods in a year. Times yung time in years. And then yung sagot doon, we will be subtracting 1. Then i-divide natin lahat by the I. Same I nung nasa numerator natin. And then, imumultiply natin siya dito sa nasa labas na 1 plus i. Kung pamilyar ka sa formula ng ordinary annuity, etong part na to ay yung formula for the future value of ordinary annuity. Pero kapag annuity due ang usapan, meron lang tayong imumultiply additionally na 1 plus i. Kaya kapag alam mo na yung formula for ordinary annuity, idadigdag mo na lang etong part na to para makuha yung formula para sa future value ng annuity due. With this, punta na tayo sa ating example. We have a student that is saving up his allowance and is depositing 500 pesos at the start of every month. Ito yung crucial word natin, nagbabayad siya sa umpisa, so ang concern natin ay annuity due. Kapag sinabi na nagbabayad siya at the end sa dulo, then ordinary annuity yung gagamitin natin. The question is how much will he receive after 4 years if it will be compounding at 3% monthly? So let us have our given values. Let us check our problem. Tignan muna natin kung ano yung value ng A. This is the periodic or series of payment. Yung studyante daw ay nagbabayad ng 500 pesos at the start of every month. So we have our regular payment of 500 pesos. Then ang susunod na given natin, nagbabayad siya at a span of 4 years. Kaya yung time natin, our t is just equal to 4. Then it will be compounded 3%. Ito yung rate of interest. Kapag ililipat natin yung percentage into decimal form, ito yung decimal point niya, mag-uusod lang tayo ng dalawang decimal places to the left. So we move 1 and then 2. Ito na yung bagong decimal point niya. Maglalagay lang tayo ng 0 in between. Kaya yung 3% in decimal, that is just equal to 0.03. Then lastly, it is compounded monthly. Kaya our M, number of compounding periods in a year, that is just equal to 12. Kasi meron tayong 12 months in a year. Then as we check our formulas dito sa taas, kailangan pa natin yung value ng R 
tsaka nung M para makuha yung I, and then yung M tsaka nung T para makuha natin yung N. Since meron na naman tayo, we can compute for the value of our I, this is just equal to R divided by M, ang R natin is 0.03, ang M natin is 12. So computing for I, 0.03 divided by, ang M natin is 12, This is just equal to, kapag pinindot nyo siya sa calculator, this is 2.5 times 10 raised to negative 3. Kailangan nyo maging maingat dito kasi maraming estudyante ang nagkakamali when it comes to writing down given into this form kasi nasa scientific notation siya. Since we have negative 3 na exponent ng 10, ibig sabihin yan, kailangan nating umusod ng tatlong decimal places towards the left. Kaya uusod tayo ng isa, dalawa, and then tatlo. Ito na yung bagong decimal point natin. Then maglalagay tayo ng 0 dun sa spaces. Ang 2.5 times 10 raised to negative 3 is just equal to 0.0025. Kailangan ko lang i-discuss to kasi I've seen a lot of students na kapag ganito yung nakita sa calculator, ang nilalagay nila sa computation ay 2.5 na hindi dapat kasi that is 0.0025. The next part, kailangan natin kunin yung n. This is equal to m times t. Our m is 12. Ang time natin is 4. Ito yung ginamit natin na formula. So, this is just equal to 12 times 4. That is equal to 48. Ngayon, kompleto na yung given value natin when it comes to our problem. Ang kailangan natin isolve ay kung magkano yung makukuha niyang amount kapag nagde-deposit siya ng 500 pesos for Four years, so that is the future value of our annuity due. Then, gamitin lang natin yung formula na nasa taas. Copy ahi natin sa sa baba. Then, let us have our computation process or our solution. Starting sa formula, the future value of annuity due is just equal to the annuity A times ang nasa numerator ay one plus i raised to n minus 1, and then this is all over i. Then dahil annuity due ang kinocompute natin, then kailangan pa natin magmultiply ng 1 plus i. Madali na kapag nakarating kayo dito sa part na to ng ating solution, kasi pwede naman tayong gumamit ng calculator. Kaya this is equal to, ang annuity natin is 500 pesos, this is multiplied to 1, plus ang i natin sa given is 0.0025, This is raised to n, our n is 48, then minus 1, and then this is all over our i which is 0.0025. Then kailangan pa natin siyang i-multiply sa 1 plus i natin, kaya maglalagay pa tayo dito sa part na to ng 1 plus i which is 0.0025. Then simplify lang natin yung nasa loob para mas madali sa computation, we perform our addition here, tsaka dito. So this is just equal to still same annuity. This is equal to 500, and then multiplied to 1 plus 0.0025. That is just equal to 1.0025 raised to 48, and then minus 1. This is all over denominator of 0.0025, and then imu multiply natin sa dun sa nasa labas natin na 1.0025. For this part of our computation, I would suggest na gumamit na kayo ng calculator to avoid random error. Pero kung iisa-isahin nyo siya, use as many decimal places as possible para yung magiging sagot ay hindi masyadong malayo kapag kinompute natin siya directly using our calculator. Then with that, the future value of our annuity due is equal to We have twenty five thousand five hundred twenty nine point twenty seven pesos. This is the future value of our annuity due. Eto yung pera na makukuha ng sajante after depositing five hundred pesos in a bank for four years. And this is the process kung paano tayo magkocompute ng future value of annuity due. Hello everyone. I am Sir Kenneth of STEM Teacher PH. Kung nakatulong sa yon tungo video na to. 
Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell para updated kayo sa ating uploads. Bye!